Hello, hello everyone. The stream is starting. How's everyone doing today? Because I am doing well. I just got the uh, video for the Immortal out today, which was the 12 plus div divination card that dropped in in uh, Shifting Stones on the last day and then was immediately voided because that is how the League works. <laughs> So I've shared that sadness with the world. We'll see what people think of that. People seem to like to cringe with uh, with us when shit happens, so. <laughs> hey, Ron. So I'm here with the, the Archmage character from Krangled. She has been respect. Uh... Partially. I, it's it's still a work in progress, but I wanted to try a, another build. I made a concept for this particular build a very long time ago, and I tried it out, and it was quite fun. But it wasn't that powerful. And that was... I believe... 3.14. So... Nine versions ago. I've gotten a lot better build crafting in the last nine leagues. So, I'm trying my hand with that build again. And that build is Blast Rain. For those who know of it, it's basically a rain of explosive arrows. It's very fun. And I am going to make it a bit ridiculous, too. So There's normal Blast Rain here. It's very fun. Well, I have a plan. Because... First thing we need to do... Where is it? Ballista Totem Support. Let's see. I have a uh, thing set up for this. So here's the path of building here. The idea is that we are going to have five Ballista Totems, each using Blast Rain. So we'll have five sets of Blast Rains going at once. And then, because I'm not taking Ancestral Bond, since it's way the fuck over here and I don't want to bother to get to it, what I'm also going to be doing is, as a Deadeye, I'm going to be taking the Mirage Archers Ascendancy Node, which allows me to have extra Mirage Archers. And I am going to be attacking as well with my own Blast Rain, which has a few separate gems that are more supporty in nature. So it's going to be me attacking, three Mirage Archers attacking, and five Totems attacking. So that's a total of nine Blast Rains at, at once. And each Blast Rain, because of the way this is set up, has... Where is it? Ten projectiles each. So that is 30 projectiles a second per blast rain, since there's three blast rains a second. That would be... What's 30 times 100? Uh, 3,000 minus... 3,000 minus... Hold on, right? Minus 300, that'd be 2,700 projectiles a, a minute? Or a second? No, that does not that does not sound right. I think it's 270 projectiles a second. I think I added one too many zeros. <laughs> but we'll see. So I'm gonna I want to put this together together today. You can see how I work or how I set up a build and how all that's working. Uh, this build is sitting at about 1.5 million DPS, so it's fairly it's still in its infancy uh it's got 60 percent movement speed which is decent 
capped resistances, it's chaos reses. Eh. 78% chance to evade, which I want to get higher because it's not very good. Uh, we have a bit of mana regen and a lot of mana leech to keep up with it. We have 3,700 life and 2,100 life leech per second, which is pretty damn good. Got some decent stats. Here's like the ma the the bigger build tree, or the bigger uh, calculations page. So for the blast rain totems, we have the uh, blast rain, ballista support, and multiple totem support to create the totems. That will give us three totems in total. We are going to be adding one extra totem via watchtowers here. And two extra totems. Another one with uh, here, so that's five. Why, am I, why is my brain confused right now? Okay, so there's two passives. They both have blister totems, that's two. I get three from the uh, skill gems, that's five. I also added a uh, skirmish quiver, which adds another totem, which is six. So this actually is too low. Okay, 1.7 million DPS, so that's the actual number. So we're going to have 10 blast drains, each with 30 projectiles a second. So that's 300 projectiles a second, with 10 blast drains running simultaneously. Uh, so this is what I've picked up here. Uh, it's actually quite similar to my raider's tree. We have our life here, accuracy, life leech, life leech, a bit of a reservation efficiency so we can pick up some extra auras, extra life up here, a bit of extra damage and stats, extra damage and stats. We have an extra projectile fired through multi-shot. We have forces of nature for extra and, uh, elemental pen, and then we have uh, the 25% chance to flip elemental resistances, which basically kind of negates our elemental penetration but it also erases all of it so that's pretty good got some spell suppression i've converted it to spell dodge because i just like spell dodge better for this type of build got the crit chance nodes got the additional arrow nodes have a inertia gem to transform dex into strength so that i have enough strength more health more health Damage, more spell suppression, a bit of movement speed. We have the watchtowers down here so that we have a uh, little bit of extra movement speed and uh, extra bliss totems, which is the most important stat. And we also have 5% of damage from hits is taken from the nearest totem's life before you, just so that in case Link does get past our evasion and spell dodge that, and it gets to our health, that this hopefully will kind of protect us. We have more uh, spell suppression from Entrench, and we have more bow damage from Farsight. A bit more health with Thick Skin, and we have Point Blank here, which just 30% more damage to targets that are near you. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how close we will be mathematically, so I've set it to a very conservative uh, 30 units. So with our Ascendancy over here, we've gone with Focal Point, which increases the damage of our marks. We're using Poacher's Marks, so that just gives increased damage to projectiles. We have marks transferred to other enemies, and enemies that are near the marked enemy do less damage, so that's always quite useful. With that, we have coupled in Mark on Hit. Where is it? Mark on hit here with the sniper's mark. Uh, we have s projectile splitting technically with the mark, but blast rain can't split because it's falling from the sky. <laughs> uh, so you mark and hit whenever you hit a rare or unique. So I don't actually have to apply the mark, thankfully. I can just kind of ignore it. And then it will automatically proliferate to uh, other enemies that aren't rare or unique. 
we have gathering winds to give us more to give us tailwind for better more action speed so we can attack faster occupying force again to add, give us more mirage archers so that we have uh, other more creatures that are using blast rain and then just endless munitions for additional projectiles I could have gone over here to Wind Ward and picked up... You can have a maximum of 10 Gale Forces, so it would be a 30% less damage. But... Uh, I really don't want to... I don't really want to lose all my Gale Force suddenly. And just have, like, a very slow speed. Because this also would slow down my movement speed. And I don't want to suddenly get really slow while being hit by things. <laughs> so, I, I'm... A bit iffy on Windward. Hi, Han. Yep, this stuff is very complicated. I I will never sugarcoat that. It is an obscenely complicated game. I love it for that specific reason that it is obscenely complicated because it allows for the more complication you have, the more options you have for all the cool shit you can do. And, make no mistake, this game is bloated as all hell. There's stuff in here that does not need to be in here, and there's stuff in here that is redundant and replaces other things, stuff that isn't even balanced anymore and hasn't been balanced in the past half a decade. Like, there's a lot of problems in the game, but I really love the complexity, personally. And one last thing I'm just going to look over here is we have... Uh, uh, can't be stunned if you haven't been hit recently, so hopefully we can't get just suddenly stunned and uh, just suddenly stunlocked and killed. And we also have uh, Mark the Prey here, so they have reduced accuracy and take more damage. So if they're less likely to hit me, and I have a 10% chance to gain frenzy ch a frenzy charge when I hit my marked enemy. And since I'm going to be attacking with 30 projectiles a second, I have 30... I have 30 chances per second to proc the Frenzy Charge. Which is pretty good. Actually, I should probably be taking another Frenzy Charge node then. Hmm. It almost makes me wonder if it actually would be more efficient to chop off this. That's two, 267. Then if I grab two Frenzy Charge nodes... No, because this would take four to get to. Hmm. I'll have to think on that one see if there's anything I don't want in this build right now. I do have a bit of a doubling up here with the uh, Primal Spirit. Uh, Primal Spirit's extremely good because it gives you the uh, form, gain four mana per enemy hit with attacks if you've used the Mana Flask recently which is just obscenely good, or if you use it in the last 10 seconds. But I also have the Clever Thief up here for leeching mana with attack damage, so it's hard to say. It's really hard to say what we need here. I've considered taking out this section here. If you watch the leech on hit, which is two point, or 2100, if I take this out, it drops to 1,200, which is a big fucking dip. And it's there because of this. I have two uh, gain five life per hit per enemy hit with attacks, and I have a 15% chance to gain 200 life on hit with attacks. And, I mean, I hit 30 times a second. Just, just me, specifically. There is also the three archers who hit 30 times a second, and the six totems that also hit 30 times a second. Each. So... I don't know if this is, like, a ridiculous amount of life leech. Like, it's a lot, but I don't know if it's an unneeded amount. So, I'm going to keep an eye on that and see how that ends up. Because, theoretically, I might not need this at all. My only problem is that then I need more int. But, yeah. I have to consider what this I actually need. Because if I can take out these, I can grab the Fervor, which will give me a lot more damage sud like suddenly. Which would be nice. 
I can take the hit in strength, but I can't take the hit in int because I need seven more int. And I believe the only int I'm getting is from Marlene's. I have it set to 25 intelligence. Uh, the best I can get with this would be 11 more intelligence. So that's actually enough. That's 8 right there. So I just need some attributes on my... I just basically I just need some blessed orbs and some intrinsic catalysts and that should be enough if I take this out and then replace it with fervor and I'm at 1.8 million I think I forgot to say hi to you Hom hi if I forgot I know I responded to what, is, to what you said, but I don't know if I said hi specifically. And I like to say hi specifically to people. So hi. Hi to anyone else who's here as well. <laughs> okay, so we are going to pick up some gear for this character. Oh, I forgot to finish going over this. So we have Dash for our travel skill. Uh, we're probably not going to need too, too much for travel because we'll be moving fairly quickly in general, but it'd be nice to have a travel skill. I would love to flame dash, but that would cost us a lot of int that we don't have. So we also have auras here. Picking up an Enlighten, which isn't actually required. Uh, we have Dread Banner, Grace, and Anger. So that will keep us with damage and then with a lot of extra evasion rating. Well, some evasion rating. 79% isn't really ideal. I don't like, I like having more than that if I can manage it. And mind you, I have no flasks. I just have the dying sun here. Uh, because it gives two extra projectiles and increased AoE, which is very good for this build. And since I'll be attacking, I can apply the enchantment Use when you hit a rare, unique enemy. Oh. Should really, really turn off... Oh, well, okay. If you want to spend four divine on me, I guess I can take a brief moment and sell something. I just funded this build. Cool. I'm going to disable these tabs, the extra tabs, because I don't need, I don't want to waste time on trades if I can while well, y'all are here. Or at least receiving trades, because we are going to do some trading now, uh, but the other way. Because we are going to be picking out some gear. And I actually specifically want to show you how I buy gear because I don't think a lot of people know how to use the trade site. Because the trade site is a very complicated, robust system that is hard to understand necessarily just by looking at it. So I want to show off a bit of how I search for things and explain how it works so that you kind of understand how I get to where I get. Anything I haven't gone over? Went over the items. Went over what I have. I still have empty set of in the boots. Don't really know what to put there. And went over the tree. Okay. So we are going to make. Let's see. Uh, these are all getting replaced. I'm just gonna take all this stuff out of these. Portal gem. I I don't want to have an int. I don't want to have an energy shield set of gloves and an energy shield and armor set of boots. That is the worst possible option for this character because I need the evasion rating badly. So, where am I at? 
I still have a surprising amount of resistances. The first thing I need is I need to get a taming, because that will level my resistances a bit more reasonably. Oh, I also need to switch out the anointment here. Buying uniques is simple, but I am going to show the more interesting things. Okay, so we have some people with resistance mods. Yeah, these are these are very these are very expensive because eight eight prismatic catalysts. So eight percent of this is one div. So this is roughly two and a half div just for the resistance mods, which is why people put it up that high. And those are probably good rings to begin with. But I sort by whatever is the stat that I care about the most. Here. All right. Here, I'll pay 90 for this. Oh, we also have some really cool things coming uh, in in the next league. I just remembered specifically about trading. So we're going to be able to split stacks of items while in the trade window, which is crazy important because sometimes you just pick up like, oh, you go to buy something that's 90 chaos and you put 100 in your inventory and then you have to cancel the trade to split the last 10 in chaos out of like out of the stack of 20 which is such a pain but they decided they're finally going to fix that so that's very exciting now you get over here This has Might on it. That's not what it's supposed to have. It needs to have Panopticon on it. Unfortunately, Panopticon is very fucking expensive. It requires two golden oils, which is ungodly expensive as far as these things, as far as anointments are considered. I mean, it's not going to be a problem like I can afford it, but it's just... It just always hurts to have to buy something that expensive. It also boosts the price of uh, the build-up, and I don't really like that. Alright, I keep doing that. We're going to get to the rare gear in a second, and then I'll actually be able to explain how the trades, how I use the trade site. Because this is just basic stuff. Okay, so... Oils... Two gold... Goiled oils, an opticon. There we are. Okay, so we need to fill up the last of the resistances and the last of the stats that we need. So we're going to have, based on this, we're going to have an inertia gem, which is going to convert a bunch of the stats. So I'm going to go buy an Inertia Gem quickly, so we know exactly how much stats we have. Because I'm going to be going off the... Uh, I'm going to be going off of the... Uh, how the fuck do you spell Inertia? That's how you spell Inertia. I'm going to be going off the, the stats in the characters or screen as to which... Uh, as to how much I want each uh, rare gear to have on it. There we go. Okay. 
That was an inertia, right? Yeah, okay. I, sometimes I'm just like, yeah, that looks right, and then I just click accept, and I don't actually look hard enough. Okay. So that, okay, that brings me to 195, so I don't need any more strength, and I don't need any more int. I have exactly what I need. Do I... I don't have all of the attribute points that I want. I'm going to need 97. I have exactly 97! Okay, yeah, I'm lucky. Cool, so all my attributes are fine. Uh, my gear just has to deal with health, spell suppression, and resistances. Uh, so I don't actually need all that much between my two pieces of gear. I guess one I can do fire and chaos res. Oh, gloves can get spell suppression on them. So I can go for fire, chaos, spell suppression, and then lightning, chaos, spell suppression. Okay, so. Gloves. Rather than selecting rare, I'm just going to select any non-unique. Because if, if a non-unique can... If a magic item can fill these parameters, then feel free to try. <laughs> okay. So. Max life. Going to be using the pseudo, not the explicit. The difference being that uh, the explicit means that is how much life you see on the gear when you look at it. Versus pseudo is how much life you get from the gear. So if you have strength and max life on the gear, it totals the amount of mana you also get from the max from the strength. Or from all attributes, which gives you strength, which gives you life. So I'm just going to say a base of 60. We are going to add a count here now. So the count function basically means that you can set how many of these stats at minimum you want to have. So I'm going to set fire and lightning here. Actually, I don't even need to make them that high. So with this, it's going to pick something with maximum life. And it's going to pick something that gives either 35 fire or 35 lightning resistance minimum. I'm also going to add some spell suppression. That's how you spell, spell suppression. All right, it's... Two words? What am I doing wrong? Oh, chance to suppress spells, right. And that one's going to be an explicit because there isn't a pseudo for it. So that means that there will be a point on the an explicit modifier rather than an implicit modifier. So if there is a synthesized piece of gear that has spell suppression on it as an implicit, so one of the stats separate from the six little explicits that you have. And here, just for explanation. So this, all the stats you see on this, there are three prefixes, a suffix, and you can have up to uh, three suffixes. There's no implicit on here. Here there is an implicit, the very top num stat that is separate from all the rest of them. So you can potentially get an implicit that can give spell suppression on gloves, but this won't allow for it because this is an explicit modifier. It only checks for explicits. It does not check for implicit modifiers like having a pseudo would. Okay, is there anything else I need? Oh, actually, I have a great idea. I'm going to add chaos to this. At just minimum 25, and I'm going to add count 2. So this pair of gloves will have spell suppression, maximum life, and either fire res and lightning res, fire res and chaos res, or lightning res and chaos res. Basically, it just allows you to do the minimum number of searches at one time, and it puts it all in front of you so you can see it all at once. Ooh, some of these are expensive. So here's here's a situation right here where having a pseudo for spell suppression would be nice because 
this didn't come up because of the spell suppression implicit it has right here. It came because of the explicit, which is unfortunate because I would prefer to be able to check for both. Okay. Ooh, we're getting expensive here. Well, I'll start at the top. Okay, so this has energy shield on it, which means that it'll have a lower evasion roll, which I don't want. This will give me lightning damage with attacks, which actually would be good because any amount of flat damage you add to something that does not have that flat damage of that type allows you to de to create the elemental ailment that relates to it. So this would actually give us a chance to shock. Just to show it off. So the blister totems are here. They have a 33% chance to ignite. Uh, you would see somewhere around here there would be a chance to shock or freeze. No, it'd be an end of the other effects. It'd be here. For example, there's a knockback chance, and there's the culling strike percent. Now let's get let's add this as a set of gloves. Okay, just added that. Now, because we added any amount of flat damage of lightning, it has a 33% chance to shock on hit now. Which, it isn't going to be a good shock, but it will be a shock. And a shock, if we just look at it real quickly. So the, the uh, max DPS went down a bit because the original gloves have uh, some good implicits on it that I will be con adding to this. But first, brain, keep working with me. Okay, so because that added shock, I'm going to add that here is the enemy shocked, which is not set up yet. So we're at 1.7 million. Oh, oh, it must already be considering it, or the shock is so minimal that it's not making a big deal of difference. Okay. That there is going to be ignite on the enemy. What that does mean, though, is both of our tamings at 30% or sorry, 20% damage with hits and ailments per freeze, shock, and ignite. Which means that since we now have a shock, we go from 1.8 here to 1.9. So that actually gives us a chunk of damage just having that tiny bit of uh, extra flat damage. I would prefer cold damage in that case, because then you get a chance to freeze, but eh. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go ahead with this one then, if they are here, because they does say away. But I find it's better to just message people who say who's have their profile set to away anyways, because you don't know if they're actually there. Like, I'll be looking in Path of Bailing oftentimes, and my I will just be kind of quote-unquote AFK, but I am actually here. So, like, I still sell things. Mm, not looking like it. Okay. So we have a few different other options. I don't think this... I think this would be actually be pretty bad for us. It is going to be kind of sad to lose the uh, the lightning damage that we could have got from that. I would have really liked that. We can remove one of our modifiers here, and that will give us a greater chance of getting what we're looking for with something else. Like here, you can get some cold damage, and now that I remove cell suppression. Lightning damage, fire damage, bit of cold damage right there. So one to two cold damage, that is like the worst possible modifier you can get, basically. And let's see, how much, what percent chance does that give me to freeze if I add that? So if I add that... 
and have a 33% chance to freeze, because any amount of flat damage gives you a chance to apply that particular type of ailment. Which is pretty important. Oh, there's one other modifier I forgot to set. So under armor here, I'm going to set minimum one evasion, which means that no matter what, every piece of gear here will have evasion on it, because I don't want to see like these pure armor bases and stuff. That's useless to me. You can also set like an actual other min minimum, like a real minimum. Like I would actually prefer to have at least 200 evasion rating. Because, like, 200 raw isn't very good to begin with, but it's a good start. Oh, it's too bad these are mirrored. If these weren't mirrored, I could just add flat damage onto it. These ones I could add flat damage onto easily. Anything with open prefects I can add flat damage to. It says dex on it. I don't really need more dex. Ooh, that one has 87 life. That's nice. That's 240. It's 244, which isn't amazing. I would prefer to be closer to the 480 that we see there. Yeah, there's a 600 right there, or 650. And it can't be corrupted. We can't use a corrupted thing because we need to add uh, Searing Exarch and Eater of Worlds and Blissets to it. So we're going to go under Miscellaneous, say no to mirrored, and no to corrupted, and no to split. Okay, so all that stuff's been removed. Now we can go back to looking through this. So do you, if you see this gray text underneath here, these are the pseudo modifiers. So this is just what it ultimately equals. Let me get a good, find a good uh, representation of what I want to explain here. Fortunately, none of these have strength on them. Or all attributes or anything. You need a craft strength on them, but basically to explain it. If this had, so this is 68 max life. Let's say that you added strength to this. Then let's say you added 20 strength and you get four. I think you get one strength per, sorry, one health per five strength. No, per two strength. Just one point of health. So that would be 10 extra strength you'd have or 10 extra health. So the pseudo would say 78 instead of 68, because it's actually calculating how much max life you would get. So I'm just going to sort by the pseudo here and see what the other options are. Goes up to 101. Some really nice numbers here, that's for sure. Yeah, see, so there's a 88 strength on here, 88 maximum life on here. And 26 strength, and that equals 101 total life raw, effectively. And that is the amount of life that you get before it adds modifiers from your passive tree. So if you, let's say, have a 200% increased life on your passive tree, this will give you 303 effective life. So your actual life gauge here will go up 303 points. If you have 200% on your 200% increased on your tree already. And ours we have we have 133% of life increased. So we if we got these. We would have a calculator. Okay. So that 103. 
times the original 100% plus 133, so that'd be 233%. This is, that's not going to work the way I want it to. Right, okay, that's because I'm doing it wrong. It'd be 2.33. So that will give me effectively, and it'll round up. So it'll give me 240 effective life to my to my character, even though it adds 101 flat life. Which is why the pseudos are useful, because then you can tell what actually gives you the highest life, even if it doesn't have the highest life roll. Because, like, this only has 27 max life, but it's higher than the 92 that's right here. Because it has two explicits that give life. For example. Anyways. Let's actually look at some of the stuff to buy specifically. I prefer to not spend a full div on this if I can avoid it. Might not be able to avoid it. We'll see. I guess I don't need to be too stingy with my uh, with my money, but I, I want to get the best bang for my buck. Okay, so this is Mirage and Hummingbird, Brile and Hummingbird. So the reason why this is plus is because two modifiers are being combined here to make this. So Mirage is one, and then Hummingbird is a uh, 39 to 42% that's being added to the 92 to 100% that is from this, which also has stone block recovery on it. Clear as mud? Okay, good. This stuff is really complicated, so if some of this or all of this is going over your head, I, I don't blame you. It's it's fair. Hmm. Wait. Which song is this? No. No, you don't. That song screams in like five seconds after that point. Okay, got that. <laughs> it always stresses me out that that ends up in the list every time. The other option is you can search by maximum evasion rating. Because that's arguably more important than life. If I can, I would like to get uh, one that only says, that only has one prefix, or sorry, only two prefixes. Actually, this one would work right here. I want the pirate song. Pirate song? Oh, wait, I think I know what you're talking about. You mean that random song that just has the yar in it every once in a while that pops up during the stream sometimes? Is that, is that what you're talking about? Because I have no idea what that's called. Uh, probably after the screaming one. That's just lo-fi. That's rock. I do actually like the song too, so that's why I'm looking to see if I can put it on. Uh, I, let, let's see if I can find it quickly. If I can't find it quickly, I'm not gonna keep looking. But oh, I think it's called. I think it's called Kraken by Azanox. Yep, this is it. There you go, pirate song. Hmm. 
Okay. So I might grab this one. Very tempted by this, because I can just get rid of the these implicit modifiers there and add flat damage to it. Plus it has some really nice evasion rating. Oh, right. I don't know if there's any other stuff by the same person as the pirate song. I'm just looking back over there. Not seeing not seeing that same name again. As an ox. Oh. Okay. Uh, for reference. Eh. Oh no. Okay, what did I just do? Okay. No. 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 Okay. <laughs> this, this is the song that you're talking about. As an ox, the Kraken. So if you want to find this and play it yourself, you can. Anyways. Okay, so we have those applied. I'm going to change out the prefix, and we can either add lightning for shock, or we can add cold for freeze. Freeze is way better. So I'm just going to pick that. Uh, eight, 818 is the best. I'm going to go for the best roll just because, I mean, I don't see a reason not to. 818. There we go. Okay, and that leads us at... 95, 92, 100. So I need some chaos res very badly. Very, very badly. Okay, so also I'm going to add some Turbulent Catalysts to here. So I have 30% elemental damage and 30% elemental damage with attacks. Add these. Brings up to 36 and 36. It's another 12% damage. Do I have extra set aside? No, I don't. I'll add some more to this one, too. Okay, so we now need some sort of something that has Chaos Res. I think I'm just looking for Chaos Res, Movement Speed, uh, let's see. Okay, Corrupted, no. Split, no. Mirrored, no. Ideally, I want at least, let's say, 250 evasion. We want boots. We want them to be anything that's not unique. So we want Chaos Res very badly. We want Spell Suppression, because Spell Suppression's great. We need Movement Speed. I'm not going to take under 30% Movement Speed. Uh, Chaos Res... What's the lowest I'll go? I'll say 15. 
and I want at least 10 spell suppression. And then since we're not going for much in the way of resistances, we can get some really beefy life, or perhaps. Let's see what this brings us with. Ooh. Wow, okay, so maybe I need to adjust those parameters a little bit, because the first thing that comes up is 3 div. <laughs> okay, which part of this just made this obscenely expensive? Uh, hmm. I'm going to remove the number on spell suppression and chaos resistance. Okay, that decreases the price a lot. I'm actually still tempted to go for this one, because that's 83 max life. This one has 35% movement speed, which is really nice, but it's 5 div. That one has 10 spell suppression, and this one has 12. And since it gets converted at a... Oops. Since it gets converted at a uh, 1 to 0 0.5 ratio, this would... Where'd it go? Did it just go off the market? I think it just went off the market. Darn. Probably because it was very good. Could also take this, this one right here. Uh, I don't want the less accuracy rating and that, but I can replace the damage on that. Or I can replace these implicits with uh, the Syrian Exarch and Eater of Worlds implicits. This would give me 30% chaos res, which would be nice because I have no chaos res. And this is one third of the price of this one. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. It's ended up being a little bit less instructional than I was hoping, because sometimes I go look for a lot more complicated gear, and those are the ones that like the trade site really shines with, like the more complex setups. By the way, we're in Ancestor League right now. I don't know if I specified that. Where this is not standard. Okay, that's everything I want. Okay. Now to erase the implicits that I don't want. Okay, damage for endurance charge, no. Drop scorch ground while moving. I like that. Increased armor, life regen, physical damage, has extra cold damage. That would actually. That actually might take the place of the extra flat damage that we added. Because I, then I could swap this for a scorch instead. Or sorry, then I could swap this for lightning damage, which add uh, shock instead. Let's see. Uh, oh, let me. So I'm gonna Control C to copy the information from this. We have the dire paw stealth gloves. Either of these, so I can delete both of those. Okay, so we have a 33% uh, chance to chill. No chance to shock because it would appear here. Then I'm going to pop in Control c to copy the item. 
Grab that, add it to here. Add that. So we're going to swap out the modifier on the dire paw now. And we're going to change that to lightning. Doesn't really matter what level of lightning. Okay, so there's now lightning here and extra cold damage on the boots. So lightning here and extra cold damage on the boots in the implicit. So that should mean, yep, we now have a 33% chance to freeze and a 33% chance to shock. Which means that we will have one ignite, one shock, and one freeze. Or one ignite, one shock, and one chill going at all times. Which means that I can up this to three, and it's at 1.965 right now, so a little bit under two million. And that brings it up a little bit over, so that's about 120,000 increase there. That's pretty cool. This also means that uh, this gear is a little bit better than what I forecasted for this build. So I my spell my evasion chance or evade chance went up by one percent, and my spell dodge chance went up by three percent. And now time to roll these. Intimidate does intimidate help me? Okay, so. 2.08, and if I hit Intimidate, it adds 100,000 DPS. Uh, currently, the old ones would have fire res on, or er, would have fire exposure on them. And fire exposure... If we scroll down to fire exposure, which is somewhere which I am struggling to see, probably because I'm looking at the wrong section. There's fire exposure. So fire exposure adds, okay, I'll have to remove it manually. Okay, so that's 46,000 it adds versus here. It's about 80,000. Okay. Rough math, the uh, Intimidate is a little bit better. So we are going to... No, not that. We are going to remove... Well, okay, it's already been removed, but we're going to add the Intimidate now. That brings us to 2.2 million. Okay, let's add an Eater modifier. Accuracy rating per Frenzy charge, no. Blind effect, no. Global accuracy rating. I don't know for sure, but that actually might be enough to save me a skill point, if that's as good as I hope it is. Because accuracy rating can be a pain. Though... To hit evasive monsters, I, I'm only at 97% chance to hit anyways, and I'd ideally like to be at 100, so having this would ma does matter. Yeah, gives me an extra percent. That's pretty good. I don't really want to... Um, I don't really want to cut it down any further, because for those who don't know, uh, going back here to the configurations page... The base evasion, the base evasion of a level 84 monster, so this is, actually this is for pinnacle bosses, but the base evasion of, let's say, the Shaper or the Searing Axarch is 10,000. So, the, your hit chance is, your accuracy rating is going against their evasion rating, here. So I just go back to, like, normal creatures. Normal creatures have 8,000... 300. Oh, let me just set this right. So at a, in a tier 16 map, the average creature has a little bit under 8,000 evasion rating. So the 
uh, general hit statistics that you are seeing here, the top one, is against that average. And then when there's a monster that has like extra evasion rating, that would be this number, the average. These are just average values in general. I'm going to put this back against a boss, because otherwise it inflates the DPS a lot. I don't want to do that. Okay, leave that up at 84 for the pinnacle bosses. I think I could bring it up to 85 for uber pinnacle. What's the difference? Oh, it decreases my crit chance a little bit. And my damage a little bit. Whatever. I'd actually prefer to... Uh... Oh, wait, no, to set it against the uber bosses, I need to set it to the proper thing, and that brings him to 657. <laughs> yeah, this character could never do uber bosses in its current form. So this is just if it goes up against a normal pinnacle boss, since the normal Syrian Exarch or a normal Shaper is how much DPS it'll have. Same thing for uh, just normal bosses in the game. So map bosses and stuff. Actually, no. I'm wrong. This is a map boss. Is 2.2. But I like to gauge it based on the Shaper. And you can see the stats specifically right here of what each boss level changes. Okay, we're almost ready to start testing this build. We have a lot of the things that we need. We do need to pick up some skill gems now, though. I'm just going to move monitors for this, just so I can look at it. We're just going to go through the earlier towns just to see what we can get. Just what we can get that's already leveled, just to make it easier. Okay, don't. No Blast Drain. Mirage. Oh, I can get Mirage Archer support here. Bastion, nope. Added fire damage. Yep. How many do I need? Two? Yep, added fire dam. Nope, not that. Then I want fire penetration, which probably isn't in this act. Nope. Nope, no focus ballista. Is that? That's ballista tome support. I need that. Okay, so I'm going to add a Mirage Archer here. Fire damage. Oh, I need a red socket on there. That in a second. Anything else I can pick up here? Elemental damage with attacks is going to be later. Inspiration support, I think, is going to be later. Yep. With the basic tiny auras, but I don't care about that. And we need dash. Uh, there's the mark skills, but the mark skills aren't going to be till later. Okay, go to Act 2. This is where we'll find Inspiration Support, I believe. And attack, Elemental Damage with Attacks. Yep, two Elemental Damage with Attacks. We need one for there. Okay, so poacher's mark, nope. Last. Wait, I have access to poacher's mark, assassins and warlords, but I don't have access to sniper's mark. I'm gonna ranger. This is a ranger. <laughs> of course I want that. <laughs> Why did they not give that to ranged builds? No fire penetration, focus ballista, no. And then none of the ores I need. 
We're not going to be able to find every gem because some gems are just not given to some glasses for whatever reason, despite the fact that this game is kind of meant to be made mixing and matching. I mean, we can buy them later at level 1, but yeah. yeah. I already have a Grace gem. I need an Anger gem. That's Dread Banner. Okay, no Defiance Banner, and we need Anger. I, mean, I can just pick up a Dread Banner for now. Oh, cool. They do a Blast Rain here. Cool, cool. I want Mark on hit support. Mark. Okay, that's Alchemist Mark. That's not useful, and no Inspiration support either. I'll have to pick up some of this stuff just from Lily, who has all the gems. But her gems aren't leveled to my level. Which, in retrospect, is a bit weird that you can either buy things at level 1, or you can search through all the basic acts and try to find things. Okay, Mark and hit support, because I need that. I need poachers. And there isn't poachers. Okay. What is everything here? There's golems, vampiric link. Okay, was I going to pick up Volley or anything? No, no. I'm only looking for Combustion and Inspiration. Okay, so I'll have to go up to uh, Lily for that, because only the first two acts have... Or sorry, only the first four acts have level gems, and the rest of them are not... Okay. So I want an inspiration support for the self cast. Uh, no inspiration support for the blista, and inspiration support for the mark. To reduce the cost of that, to reduce the mana cost. Then we need poacher's mark to go with it. We have our dash over here. We need our defiance banner. Okay, so that's all the only three we need right now. Our auras, self cast. What are we missing from self cast? We're looking for our fire penetration support. Pen. Add that to the self cast, and I think I also need another one. Yep, need another one for this cast. And I'm missing multiple totem support, which is right here, because I already know what it looks like for some reason. <laughs> okay, so I now have our blast rain ballistas, and we can have six of them. Okay, so I need a red, red, green, blue on something. Also need a green, 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 red. Guess what? You are about to become a double red. Two red sockets. Okay. That'll work for now. I like to just put these in my off uh, my uh uh when you hold down control you get like the separate set of the separate hotkeys. That's what I like to put it. Oh wait. I need to swap these. 
because if I want to actually put the banner down, I want it to be in the same spot. Okay, all that goes away. Now we need one of these to become a triple green and one red. This is full green, this is green and blue. So it'll be easier to make this into what we're looking for. And we're going to use the socket trick instead of using chromatics for this. So for those who aren't familiar, you can just add sockets rather than adding colors. So let's say, so I need three greens and one red. Okay, I got what I needed. I had a four socket. So if let's say I needed a red for the four socket there, I'd go back, set it to three sockets, and roll again. Set it to three sockets, roll again. And I'd keep doing this again and again until I got this to turn into the red socket that I needed. But in this case, I don't need that. I I need the easy thing. So I have dash right there. So I can fire this, and I'm going to have my totems going. Oh, it takes a lot of man to summon my totems. So I need to actually be hitting something, because otherwise I'm just wasting my mana. Okay, so let's just... Now let's actually try this out after how long? We've been doing this for an hour and 20 minutes. Okay, so people who actually want to see gameplay. <laughs> so this is, in the vaguest sense, how this build is, would play. Right here. Oh god! <laughs> uh... And then I have my stuff. Oh, my Mirage. I, I'm not even using my Mirage Archers because I don't have my Ascendancy set. And also this stuff is too weak to even take the Mirage Archers. Because the totems are already shredding everything. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> also a good chance to level up things because do I ever need them? So I can attack for real cheap, and then my totems can just shred everything else. That was me and two totems, so less than a third of the actual firepower. This is full. This is most of the firepower. I think I actually need to find a boss. Don't die. Nope. <laughs> it's a bit too squishy for me to get everything down. Also, oh, I have the wrong thing set. That's that's what's going on. I don't have the occupying force, which is what I need. Let's go back to town. Okay, so each ascendancy point is worth five, and I need to I need to do, undo th four of them. So I need twenty orbs of regret. Okay, time to get some orbs of regret. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we have Occupying Force. So now we can actually start to see what it looks like. Okay, so ideally I want to go to a place where what I'm fighting is tanky enough to withstand me and my totems so that I'm actually getting something done. Uh, what's Leyline look like again? 
Oh, Leyland's easy. Let's do a tier five. I don't know what this what this character can do, but let's just try this. So this will be a uh, area level seventy two. Yep. Okay, let's see how it actually responds when it's in actual area. Like an actual area that matters. Oh, I feel slow. What I need is I need to just get a map that has like a vastly increased boss health thing. Okay, so that's all my totems. And... <laughs> I'm still, like, struggling to actually reach the amount of totems that I want. This is fun. I will say this is, like, a really fun build so far. I mean, this is barely a build, but this is like the bare minimum for what it would take to make this build a thing. Ooh, okay, this one's tanky. Oh, Damn it, I need things that actually can withstand me for a little while. Otherwise, I can't bring out all of my stuff. Because I have a Mirage... Okay, so I sp spawned one Mirage Archer. But I need all three of them to actually reach the full damage. And then I need to actually put down my totems. That's a bit more what it's going to look like. That's six totems and me. Okay, I'm going to try the boss now. Ah, uh, so I'm only seeing one Mirage Archer, really, because you need to be far enough away. Cool. Okay, so that's actually, that actually was kind of a decent representation of what this build is. Okay, this guy's tanky, that's good. Okay, that's close. That's, that's pretty much what it would be. Except for I don't have the... Uh, uh, I was missing a Mirage Archer there, because it didn't spawn. Probably because I was too close to other things. I don't have the full DPS that I need. And actually, this is the wrong setup of stuff, because I need to have Combustion in here, which will make me do more damage. Is there anything else I'm missing? I mean, I'm going to be going up against, like, stronger things eventually. Too. Let's go get a stronger map. Uh, what's a good map? Let's look out again. Uh, look out actually might be decent for this. I really like more boss health, honestly, just so I can see more of what this thing, this build can do. Oh, this is just a six socket. I don't care about that.
Okay, so the first thing I'm learning is that I don't think I'm going to have access to all my Mirage Archers in a boss fight. It just, that's just not realistic. Because they need me to be far enough away to also to spawn. Oh, the knockback is really nice. Oh, these things don't have much health, the ballistas. They're actually quite squishy. Where am I getting all the knockback from? Oh, bow knockback at close range. So that's just any time that... Anything is close to my ballistas, they knock back. And anytime anything is close to me, I knock back. Ooh. Ooh, there's oh, there's an exile in there too. Full power! Oh power! Ah! <laughs> okay, so I think what I need to do. Going back over here for a second. Is I said I had I set a number of Mirage archers, didn't I? Somewhere? Thought I did. Oh, so it says it does have me set for them. Uh, hmm. I would really like to be able to decrease the number of Mirage Archers. Is there a config for that? Impales, summon totems, inspiration charges, banner stages. Ignite stack, effect, chill effect, shock effect. No. I do have a totem summoned. That's frustrating. Because I don't want to count all of... I don't want to count all three in a boss fight. I don't think that's reasonable, actually. Oh, okay, let's let's go kill um Filth Pit or whatever his name is. Plague Wing. Ooh, this is a tanky one. Hellfire! Okay, so the toto the these totems are like obscenely weak. That is a problem that I have to consider. They can't be getting hit a ton because otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. They're just going to get melted. But the fact that I have the bow with knockback on it, I think is probably saving them. I do wonder what will happen if I have a bunch on Burning Ground. Because if I have Burning Ground... Oh. Oh! Oh, that Ice Nova just killed all of my totems. Oh, that's a big problem, that it can just do that. Because, like, I need them to be able to withstand, like, basic shit like that.
Like I can't I can't be having like a single ice nova and then all my damage goes away. Okay, so they're they're the totem life is ass and I might actually need to do something to like defend them specifically. Actually, that might mean that I need to remove the they take a percent of my damage thing potentially. Could that be killing them? Could be. I don't I don't know if it's killing them though. Uh there's nothing here that protects them specifically. I don't like that cuz I don't have there's, I have, like, no totem life anywhere, because the only totem stuff is in this entire area is here, and the next closest is here, which is pretty fucking far away. And then every, like, all the other actual totem stuff is up here. Because we have Ancestral Bond, we have Primal Manifestation, we have Shamanistic Fury, we have Shaman's, Shaman's Dominion, and we have Totemic Zeal. But... None of that is close by to me. Maybe it'd be worth it to path all the fucking way over here. Because I could get a bunch of totem life. Almost makes me... Well, I can't, I can't give up Panopticon because it gives a plus one totem, which is... Like, plus one to totems, which is... Irreplaceable. Kinda. But... Ironwood gives more totem life and element of resistances and armor. The like, like the armor goes to me. This makes me wonder if I need to consolidate all of my stats onto my gloves and then pick up Torchoke Step, which gives a bunch of extra totem life. Because that might that just might be needed. Should be at the boss pretty soon. And even just like I'm doing a fair bit of damage, even with like unupgraded gems and just self casting. Like there's no totems involved in this right now. This is just me and my Mirage Archer. Two of the ten, really. Okay, I want to check how many green Mirage Archers appear during this fight. After Plague Wing spawns. Ooh. That's a spicy amount. Ooh, look at that. They're getting bullied. <laughs> Where's Plague Wing? There you are. Okay, if I move around a bit, does that give me enough? Okay, that gives me three Mirage Archers. Okay, there was Caustic Ground right there. Oh, look what the Caustic Ground's doing to the totem! Oh, shit. So if I have... So that means that this build can't withstand Burning Ground. At all. Or Caustic Ground. Or Desecrated Ground? Actually, I don't think Desecrated Ground does damage. Do I have anything that just, like, happens to have Burning Ground on it already? Whatever. I'll just roll something with Burning Ground on it. What was that that we just did look out? I'll do another look out. Okay, not that. Never negative player max res. Less accuracy rating. Eh, that kind of sucks. But what I'm looking for is not that. I want, so that's Desecrated Ground. I want Burning Ground, specifically. Because I want to see what happens. Like, I think I know what's going to happen. 
There's shelled ground. Wow, how hard is it to actually get burning ground when you're looking for it? <laughs> I've wasted like a hundred chaos on this now. There it is, burning ground. Okay. Okay. Uh... Okay, this does have burning ground. Just place my totems down. Oh, God. Okay, that's really bad. I wonder if the Soul of Abrath unaffected by Burning Ground would actually save them. Oh, that's awful. Like, they take so much fucking damage from that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I should have a torch oak still somewhere. Do I have a torch oak step? No, no torch oak steppy. No steppy. Steppy steppy. No steppy steppy. Okay. I need. I need to grab one because that might be required to even make this remotely good. I didn't realize how low the totem life was on ballistas. Okay. I'll pick this one up. This also means that I'm going to lose... A chunk of evasion rating, because I have 500 evasion rating on this raw, and I'm about to lose all of that. Which sucks. But I mean, if I need it for the totems, I need it for the totems. Like, they need to, <laughs> they need to survive long enough for me to use them. Okay, that's a max totem life torch oaks. Okay, uh, and unfortunately it gives me armor. I don't want to armor, but here I am. Actually, do I have... Well, no, I don't have quality on everything. I should quality everything first. Okay. I need three green on this. Okay, so I'm going to use the socket trick in a second. So I need to get a red green right here. Okay, got my red green. Three sockets, no. Green, no. Green. Nope. <laughs> Give me a green. There are easier ways to do this, but there aren't cheaper ways to do this. Because technically I can craft three green onto this. But that would cost me 120 chromatics. And... The jeweler's orbs are worth nowhere near the same amount of money. Wait, no, I'm doing this wrong. Two, three. Uh, 
Come on. You know you want to give me another green socket. Okay. Two greens. The more efficient thing would have been to make sure the first two sockets were green before I did this, actually. Because then I could make the last socket red, which would have been cheaper in retrospect. Come on. Come on, you can do it. No, don't don't reduce it to two sockets. I don't want to lose my other green socket. I mean, if I did that, I'll just I would just craft it on at that point. Just for the sake of speed. There we go. Now we can link them, and we have three off colors on a red base. Not the easiest way I could have done it, but it is better. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, that's a little bit slower now. Swapping my boots out again. Ugh, oh, that's painful. Let's try it with this for now. Actually, first. So I'm at 71% chance to dodge to evade and 43% chance to dodge spells. If I swap this out, I drop from 71 to 69 and 43 to 39. Ugh. Oh, I also lose a large amount of health, too. Yeah, I lose almost 200 health doing that, and 30 Chaos Res. And I lose my cold damage that I need, and I lose the Scorching Ground that I drop. Because the Scorching Ground scorches things, which is good for me. Okay, let's try this for now. Why are there seven? Why are there seven? Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I have seven ballistas. I'm only supposed to have six. Where did I math wrong? <laughs> Okay, no, hold on a second. I'm supposed to have five right now. Because I don't have... I don't have my skirmish quiver. Which gives a plus one. Where am I getting ballistas from? Okay, I... Oh! Ballista totem support is plus two to maximum number of summon ballista totems. Oh! Oh, that's nice. I might not even need multiple totem support then. Because that would just bring me... If I took out multiple, so, yeah, multiple totem support, I would get right back down to... Um, I drop right back down to uh, six totems, which is what I expected, and I could put another better modifier there. Okay, let's run back here. This is how I make builds. This is all how all the testing works. Oh, not that. So technically, with this current setup, what I actually have 
is, well, since I will have plus one from the skirmish that I don't have right now, that will bring me up to eight, which is at 2.5 million, so two and a half million. If I take out multiple totem support and replace it with something else, uh, does this naturally... I mean, they're going to be... Wait. What's going on? So I, pick, so I wanted to pick up Focus Ballista Support. Did I actually do that? No, I didn't. So my tones are auto-firing right now. Which is fine. But I can make it so that they only fire when I tell them to, which makes them fire way faster. Oh, I don't have elemental damage with attacks. That That's the extra thing that got added. Okay, so with 8 totems, I'm at 2.5. And then if I swap out multiple totem support and drop down to 6, I'm at... Oh, 3.1! <laughs> okay, so I need to get rid of multiple totem support and put in... Immolate support, then. Oh, my portal was beside me. I don't know why I moved the portal, like... 10 units. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure you can either get Immolate in the first or second act. I'm gonna go grab one of these. And replace... Immolate. Nope. It must be the second act. If not, I'll just level a new one. Yeah, I'll just level a new one. Okay, take out multiple drum support. So I just have Blast Drain, Ballista Totem support, Immolate, Elemental Damage with Attacks, Fire Penetration support, and Fire Damage support. So... This actually is, this DPS is wrong, because the actual thing would be, uh, so 3.12, 2.9. Yeah, so I do more, I get more damage if I have Focus Ballista, but it only works when I'm attacking. Just for a moment, let's swap to Focus Ballista support so that I can... So we can just kind of see what that actually looks like. Take out the elemental damage with attacks. Back in here. Okay, so now I only drop one at one totem at a time, and they only attack when I do. So that they are not auto-firing anymore. But they do... They certainly do just rain hell. Yeah, so I have five totems right now, because my sixth comes from Skirmish, which I didn't buy yet. It sucks having to spawn multiple totems, like having to cast twice as many times. Well, this build, despite being like very poorly cobbled together right now, is actually doing a tier 10 map. Actually, hold on a second. There's one other thing I can do. Uh, though this will require me to go back to the town. 
if I go get myself some more of the regret. There we go. I get myself some more of the regret. Not you. And if I swap out this from totems take damage from me over to 30% chance to summon two totems instead, that might actually be, that might feel a lot better now. So let's try this now. Wow, I get the 33% chance a lot, apparently. Okay, that just killed all my totems. I spend too much time casting totem, I won't be able to actually have them attacking, is another problem, is if I focus Ballista support, then they're only attacking when I'm attacking, so if I'm casting a totem, I'm not attacking. Actually, wait a minute. Does that mean that they just attack irregardless whether there's anything here? Oh yeah, so this is... That's like most of the DPS right there. Okay. I do kind of like them attacking themselves... Like, attacking on their own, though. Like... Totems being like an auto fire thing is kind of nice. Even though this technically does give me extra damage. This might be better for a bossing situation the uh focus ballista support but not i don't i don't think for the uh oh this thing's tanky that's nice i don't think it's gonna be a good idea for mapping per se So I gotta say, this is pretty good. We uh, managed to bring the build from 1.7 million DPS to 3.1 so far this stream. That's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know if I like the Focus Ballista support when I'm just just wandering in maps. Because, like, while I'm just casting totems here, nothing's happening. And also, I need to, I need to take the time to make sure that I'm casting, because otherwise I'm just not at full DPS. There we go. Okay, now let's get rid of these. At least I can also control where they're attacking very effectively with this. That is another thing that is a benefit of Focus Ballista support. Ow. Wow, I'm running out of health potions pretty badly. Hmm. Okay, so Focus Ballista Support is an idea. I don't know if it's a good idea, but it is an idea. That's a summit map, actually. Hold on. This actually brings up a different question. Because... So adding Divine Vessel to the summit map, this is where you get Method the Earth Shaper, which is the person you need to get unaffected by Burning Ground. So I'm actually going to pick up that really quickly, and I want to see if it makes my totems unaffected as well. I'm 
Okay, so I'll put Focus Ballista support. Just gonna throw a bunch of this shit into socket so that it's still leveling while I'm busy. I don't have... Fortunately, I don't have a golem with me, but whatever. Oh god, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so now I don't have focus ballista support. I can just throw my ballistas down and they'll do their thing. If I can play more totem, then... Then not. I naturally just hit the delirium earlier. I kind of wish I did not. Oh, no, it's nice, Nova. And there. Actually, my totem didn't all die. I don't think. I really like having the uh, knockback from the Chin Soul. The uh, the bow here. It's really, really nice. Because it works for the totems as well, not just me. If it worked for just me, it wouldn't be as good. Eh! No. I'm trying to level up my gems. Leave me alone. This does feel really good, though. I probably will be making a full build guide on this, seeing as it's really fun. I've been wanting to make do something with... Uh, the my Archmage characters, seeing as like once Crimson League ended, like my, everything changed on the passive tree, so I, she's not actually an Archmage anymore. <laughs> oh, I laughed at him and he killed me for it. <laughs> oh no! Hey, that was rude. Did I drop a portal? I should have. No, I didn't. Darn it! This is what happens when you're silly and forget to do things. Whatever this rogue exile is, is made of some tough stuff, apparently. Whoa. Oh, this was an operative, so that's why. Okay, let's actually get back to the boss room. What say we? Just leave my totems as I go. I wish I could cast them a little bit faster. It's too bad there isn't a faster casting or something. <laughs> no, I I don't I don't think faster casting support would help me here though. Hmm. 
with how fast I put down... Oh, no. I need to get out of here. With how fast I put down the totems, maybe their life doesn't matter as much, because, like, I don't know whether I'm pl I've placed all five yet immediately, so I often will just, like, dump a bunch down, and it'll probably replace the first few anyways. So maybe I don't need the extra life from Torch Oaks. There's a lot of delirium things in here, which is yet another reason why to not hit the delirium mirror on the way in. Okay, no, don't hit me with anything, please. I know your fireball's nasty. Oh, yeah, that fireball. Ah! There's so many things going on! I don't appreciate it. This build's not set up yet. Help! <laughs> no! Wait, yeah, I can... I can use some... Some things. Eh. Eh. Ah, die! Thank you. Ow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now. Whew. Okay. Now I can actually check and see if the... If that Pantheon works with my totems. Because my, to my totems inherit my stats. And... If the unaffected by burning ground is quote unquote my stat, then that would work. Okay, so I need to actually make burning ground now. I'm gonna swap back to the uh, rare boots because if I can manage it, I really would prefer to use these instead. Just because they're so much better for my defenses. I, I once again need a place that has burning ground. Here's a solution. Just keep going until I find till I, a map gets created with burning ground. <laughs> no. That's shocked ground, but that's not really what I'm... Oh, burning ground there. Please tell me this isn't, like, can't regen or something. No, I can do that. I need to make sure that it ha I can leech on it, because if I can't leech, then I am in danger. Oh, no! No! Not doing this all over again. Okay, let's clear this area a little bit. Okay. Is that everything? Yes. Okay. Let me go over here now. Totems! Okay, so the unaffected by burning ground does not affect, does not protect them. But also, there's only so much burning ground anyways. Actually, the higher level maps will have higher burning ground too. They last a fair bit of time though, and I keep 
If I'm going to keep moving and spawning new ones, then... Yeah. Honestly, the burning ground's probably not going to be an issue, and I don't think I need the totem life. Okay, I would like the totem life, but I don't need the totem life. I wonder what sort of protections it has. Uh, I'd love to know how much, uh, re how many resistances the totems have specifically. Actually, I could find that out. Okay. Unless they inherit my resistances. Because they inherit, like, a lot of your stats. Cause if, it, and if they inherit your resistances, then my resistances are great. So, that's fine. But, I don't know what they do. Can't, I don't think there's a way to see the totem specific stats. Because you can split it when you have minions between your stats and minion stats. But... I don't think that's really how this works for totems. Okay, well, that leads us to a different question. Okay, Pooey Wiki. Totem. And totem stats. Let's see. Okay, we'll cast skills test by totems are affected by modifier all modifiers affecting the players. The stats of the totem itself are not. Uh totem will not benefit from passive skills or gear that increase the life, energy, shields, or resistances of players. Because they're not considered wearing the player's armor. Okay, so totems have a standard thirty or sorry, forty percent elemental resistance and twenty percent chaos resistance. Um Regardless of any resistance penalties applied to the player. Totem life skills on the level of the totem skill, or in the case of totems turned it or skills turned into totems, the level of ballista support or spell totem support. Oh, okay. So my totems are gonna get tankier over time then. Because my ballista totem support is only level fifteen. So they're they're they will become more. They'll become more tanky over time, for six more levels. Uh, so they're level fifteen right now. But twenty-six percent less damage. So once I, I'll have two percent less damage. Increased less damage. But. How does it calculate totem life? Totem life, base life skills on the level of the totem skill. But there is nothing in Ballista Totem specifically to say what its skill is like. Okay, let's look at... Artillery Ballista. That's probably going to have similar stats. There is no information here. That's not what I wanted. Hmm. Oh, that's why they summon so close to you. The Ballista Tones have a shorter summoning range. That's why you kind of just, like, poop them out. There's nothing here that shows the totem life. Okay. Well, let's try this. Ballista, totem, life, Huey. Yeah, no, I know that. That's not helping. <laughs> Ballista tomes are sheets of paper. 
Yep. Yep. I somewhat agree with that. I imagine in tier 16 maps it's much worse. Um, no, that's not useful. Hmm. I really would like to like have a graph for how much they are. Oh, so this is just generic ballista totems in general. But this doesn't tell me what the base life of a, of a totem is. And I don't think that ballista totems are the same life-wise as normal as other totems because the totem life on my flame surge totems was pretty ridiculous. Though I also had a bunch of totem life modifiers on there already, so there's that too. Has anyone made a totem life chart? Has anyone made a sexy, sexy chart for me? I would love a sexy chart. Mm -hmm. Oh, right here. Someone made a sexy, sexy chart. Okay, so that's a fact. Okay, so it's like 90. Hold on. So it's a 900 difference there, 920. So 460. So 9,800 life it has. It doesn't actually help me because that I don't have a context for how. <laughs> Hmm. Because, like, all of this I'm considering uh, Ironwood because it gives you 30% to all element resistances, which would bring... Because they default... By default, they have 40%. So this would bring them up to 70%. So things like Burning Ground would not do nearly as much to them. Same with just elemental damage in general. So the Ice Novas wouldn't just shred them. This is really far away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points I need to do that. It does give me access to another mastery if I want it. So I could pick the global critical strike chance one, which would be good. And I can grab Panopticon natively, which would give that's cost ten. I go over here, that's twelve points I'd need. I need to to Cut 12 points out of my tree somewhere else to do that. Which is a lot of points to cut. Really is. Wait, this is the wrong thing. I want this. Okay, I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna make a second passive tree now. So we're going to fuck with this one a bit. Okay, chopping off that, that gave me four points. Okay, so I can remove Panopticon as a anointment. I still need to remove seven points now from my tree. Hmm. 
No matter how I look at this, it's going to cut down my damage a lot. I don't think I have any real recourse when it comes to that if I want to move this with these points around. If I can get enough strength elsewhere... No, I can't get enough strength just by going over here, because most of these are defense are dex nodes anyways. So I need that. I can't take that out. Well, okay. Let's say I took off... Fuck, it's, it's really hard to choose what to get rid of when you need so much of it. Okay, well, the the Frenzy Charge is just extra damage. And I'm going to take this out, too. So that leaves me at 92. So it did drop the damage of the build to 2.361. Which is not good. What's this do? That actually is pretty good. That right, because I went to spell suppression. I don't want to lose any spell suppression because defenses defenses are always the easiest thing to cut out of a build, and the first thing that will lead to your build just self destructing on itself. Which is and like it's so tempting because like oh this doesn't remove any damage from the build. Well, yeah, it actually does remove damage, because if you aren't alive, you can't deal damage. It's kind of kind of how that works. How much do I lose if I cut these out? It's actually not that bad if I remove these crit nodes and put this. Because this gives me more totem placement speed, which would actually be really nice for the amount I'm placing them. No, I need the int from that. I can't remove it. Uh, it's it's so hard to find to figure out what you can cut and what you can't cut. Oh, it's just it's really punishing. Okay, let's leave the build at level ninety one for now, just because I can't figure out what else to get rid of. I could technically get rid of surveillance, but I don't want to. Okay, so doing that gave me a lot of extra li like totem life and such. It did tank my damage from, what was it before? 3.1 down to 2.2. .2. But also, I haven't re-anointed yet. And this will give me some of my damage back. Oh, one... <laughs> the top two things that I unallocated are the ones that it's suggesting. So if I pick multi-shot, I get back to 2.5. So I'd be trading 600,000 DPS for... <sighs> for what, exactly? Okay, well I get 20% totem placement speed. I would get 60% totem life, 30%... Plus 30% elemental resistance to totems, and 30% additional physical damage reduction to totems. Sorry, 70% increase to totem life. Is there totem life in here somewhere? Oh! There's a totem life thing right- holy shit, that's nothing! 
2,500 is not much. I didn't even notice that there was, like, totem stats down here. Okay, that's kind of awful. Uh... One second, let me just swap over this quickly. Oh no, that's... Ah. Uh, me technically it's better, but I like I like not having to attack to spawn things. Okay, so So the difference is 500,000 GPS. Uh going back to the base uh the base tree. I have 1,500 totem life instead of 2,500 totem life. So basically it almost doubles the totem life to add what I was adding. Oh, the totem life is, or the totem limit is decreased because I moved to Panopticon. Hmm. Also down to 99% hit chance instead of 100, which I don't like. Yeah, they are really are paper thin, aren't they? That kind of hurts, but eh. I'm gonna stick with the original tree for now. With the. Marlene's that has Panopticon on it. Okay, that gives me 22.9. <clears throat> so if my totems survive, I can deal a lot of damage. If my totems do not survive, I cannot deal a lot of damage. <laughs> it's just... Basically that. <laughs> okay. So let's try... Let's try a better, like, a higher tier map. Because we've done tier 10s now. And that's been good. But first, before we do that... No, nope, not bulk. Okay, I need a skirmish quiver so I can actually have the extra totem because that's going to be really valuable. Uh, I guess I'll pick whatever is the highest int. Sure. Try this one. Just pick this up quickly so we can have our maximum number of totems, and then we can kind of play it more realistically. Hmm. I could also... Just as a temporary measure, I can grab a summon ice golem. Let's put all my cast when it's done. Okay. Answer me, friend. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to get this and then do a tier 16. See how that goes. That, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Actually, in the path of building, what is the implicit set to for the skirmish? Come to think of it, I haven't checked that. 
Oh, so it's at 25%. I can just up that very easily with the Blessed Orb. That's not hard to do. And that gives me enough to bring it up to 100% again. Thirty percent. Okay. So let's go grab a tier sixteen and see what happens. Here I have lots of hydras. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't set myself up for failure. <laughs> yeah, let's pick a really fucky hellish map. Glacier. Okay, let's see if my totems can actually survive for more than 30 seconds. My totems are kind of staying alive. Oh, look at look at that blast rain. Oh, that's nice. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, my entire computer just slowed down for a second. <laughs> Okay, if I let things get close to me, I'm in serious trouble. So I'm just going to push you away. My knockback. Keeping in mind, this is like, these are dramatically underpowered totems. And like, this build is dramatically underpowered compared to what it actually would be. Because I'm only using like, at best, uh, level 15 gems. This is more of what it... This is, like, the level of power it would have at the end of the campaign. Maybe a little bit past that. I still don't have, like, the actual flasks I would need either, so... I could get a little bit more power and stuff from that. Holy shit! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I made an error. <laughs> I, I survived for a surprising amount of time. Considering that this is a tier 16. I'll give the monsters a bit of extra armor. Sure. You can have armor against my fire damage. Technically, the uh, Blast Rain does deal physical damage. That's, that's fully converted. But that doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm pretty it's pretty likely for me to just get one shot cuz I don't have a lot of the stuff that I would need yet. Like an upgraded grace for perhaps would be nice. So I could have a bit more evade chance. Oh, my totems go away so quickly. Ugh. That is annoying. I don't know if they're dying or they're just expiring due to time. No, I think they're dying. Because <laughs> there is a lot of damage coming at me. Uh, 
Uh, for those who aren't familiar with totems, the uh, there's a number in the top left-hand corner right now of the screen. It's at five, six. That's just how many totems I have up, so I kind of keep an eye on that, trying to keep it at six. Because it's much, certainly much easier than trying to look at the ground and figure out where my totems are. That's not happening. No idea what's happening most of the time here. The other number beside the blaster and totems is, that has the same icon is my uh, Mirage Archers, who are also casting Blast Rain. Little green guys. Well, I gotta say, doing pretty good on a tier 16. Oh, hi, Huck. I don't know if Huck has any sort of... Oh, he is zealotry. I don't think there are many auras he could have that would benefit me anyways, but still. I should also note that this build gets a lot stronger when you have an anomalous blast rain rather than a normal blast rain. Because it gives you a 5% chance on hit to... Uh, to uh, cover a Nash, which is probably one of the best buffs you could get for this. It's better than, than most fire exposure, and it's better than uh, Intimidate. Cover Nash and Cover and Frost are like two very strong buffs that are hard to get. The fact that this natively has it is really good. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Oh, no. Oh, I don't think I'm going to survive this. Yep. <laughs> I'm very curious to see if this character can kill a tier 16 yet. Uh, sorry, kill a tier 16 boss yet. I missed a word in that sentence. With the uh, the way that things are going uh, with the league, and <laughs> kind of just how like the ancestors is starting to get kind of boring for me, honestly. I think probably what I'm going to be doing, like for the next next few streams till we get our new league, is probably I'm going to be theory crafting different builds, and we're going to be making probably more build guides and more build options to play with. I don't know if I'll be able to, like, actually build all of them like I have done here, but it I think it'd be worth it. Because there is a uh, Iron Mass skeleton build that I would love to show off, too, which uh, Iron Mass is the uh, weapon that makes it so that... All of your skeletons have a copy of the weapon, and use that weapon to attack. It withers, it has a high conversion to chaos damage, and it gives them triple damage if you've attacked recently. Which is pretty fucking good, I gotta say. Uh, but you have to have been attacking recently yourself. So like you have to have a build that's set up to uh, also attack as well as your as your um skeletons. So it's like a hybrid minion build. You know, I'm starting to get the hang of this build. This actually like feels really good for a build that has just been created. Because I only made, uh, like started making this build yesterday, so it hasn't had much time to cook yet. 
in the old idea oven. Yeah, this is pretty good, because this is a tier 16. And, like, I have, I don't think I've bought anything that's, like, super crazy for this build. That's, like, unobtainable normally. Like, I bought some expensive rare gear, but, like... I mean... That's mostly just give, giving me extra defense, or just giving me extra, like, resistances and stuff. Nope, not yet. What's this? Oh, okay, the Rislatha's Coil and the Tamings are both expensive. Uh, the Tamings you can make with the three Barrack Rings, so if you make the Tamings yourself, that will probably be cheaper. Uh, the Six Link Chin Soul is a bit expensive, but it's not required to get the main part of the build up and running, because like, I'm not using, I'm only using a three Link technically right now. You do need a six link rare, that's fine. The three dragons and the skirmish are dirt cheap, same with the Marlene's Fallacy. I know because I just bought a Marlene's Fallacy for the Flame Surge totem build in the event league, and it cost me 2c by the time I was ready for it, so not a big deal. The Rislatha's Coil, though, is a pain. Because, I mean, in Ancestors... They're sitting at, like, 30, 35c to start with. So, and, like, they have a very wide range of quality. Like, this isn't even a good one that I got. And the tamings are... They have a, they have a very wide range, but if you just sacrifice some resistances on them, you would be fine. And... As you can probably see from my resistance panel, you can sacrifice some resistances on them. These are both 28s, so if I took 16 off... 82... Yeah, if, if I had these both minimum rolled, I still would be fine. And they're implicit at average, which is 9. So you can craft these with the barracks rings, and that's probably your best bet. But the Rosalitha's Coil is, no matter what, is going to be expensive. There's not much There's not much around that, specifically. Wow, just, just watch, watch my health bar for a second. Oh, well, okay. It's not really showing right now. Ow. Man, that guy hurts. But, like, you could see my uh, health going up and down, up and down, up and down, like, really fast, because I was taking a huge amount of damage, but I also have, like, a lot of leech. One. Two. Three. Four? You're only supposed to dump three times. Why are you taking no damage? Holy shit. It's possible that my stuff just isn't strong enough. I might not be able to out-handle his regen. What is... Is he on Consecrated Ground? Oh shit, if he's on Consecrated Ground, I'm in trouble. Okay, he needs to not be on Consecrated Ground, otherwise he'll be regenerating everything. Yep, that, is, that was exactly the problem. I mean, I have out of portals now, but... I mean, my bossing DPS is not there, of course, but that's to be expected with the build that is not ready in any capacity. <laughs> Still feel pretty good, though, because that means that this build is on the same 
tier as my original Archmage in Krangled was, since she was able to do her first map as a Maze of the Minotaur at tier 16. And this one hasn't really gained much since then as well. Though the Rosasa's Coil is kind of expensive. That's a pretty hard thing to replace, because it's just, it's just really, really good. Adds a ton of health, a ton of damage, it gives you strength that you need, like, it's, it's hard to replace. And if you can get a, uh, if you can get a Corrupt Implicit on it, too, that changes from stun duration to Anger Aura Effect, Grace Aura Effect, Max life, percent dex, percent strength, um, grants grace level 21, grants anger level 21, like any of those stats would be amazing. I don't know if Scorch Round actually helps me with the tiny, tiny bit I get. I also need a guard skill, because I don't have a guard skill going, which is a problem. I wonder if I have just a random guard skill hanging out. Mm, don't think so. Because with this build, it would be ideal for me to pick up a steel skin, because that can get up to 2400, uh, a 2400 health shield. It's at 1000 at, at level 14, but... Uh, sure. Okay, so I'd need to add a steel skin to it, and that will give me a bit of a that will give me a bit of help, and I can add increased duration to it and all of that. Yeah, I could add increased duration. I could do steel skin increased duration. Uh, and then split the link so I have a two link and a two link, and then I could do cast when stunned and something. I don't know what I would do, but something. I mean, the ice, I don't think the ice golem is actually worth having, really. Like, it, it can give me a little bit of extra accuracy, but also... I can't really count on it to be alive, so I don't know. Hard to hard to say if that's worth it, but I can throw something in there. Oh, oh! I know what I can throw in there. I can throw a withering step in there. Divergent withering step. So it has 20% chance not to uh, remove the buff when you use a skill, and just it basically just makes you elusive, which is a which is a buff that instead of crease, in decreasing duration decreases power. It starts at 200% ish. Uh, it at, at 100% it has a 15% chance to just avoid damage flat. Like, just avoid hits of all types. At 200%, it starts at about 30%. And that degrades over, like, I don't know. Well, it's his last three seconds, so it degrades over three seconds. No, that's the wither that lasts three seconds. The elusive, I don't know how long that lasts. It also gives you phasing and stuff, which is good. I think it will give you, like, eight, six to eight seconds. As long as you don't use a skill when it happens, you're fine, and it's very easy to accidentally cancel it. But... I 
I just realized the problem with this, actually. Because if I'm using Steel Skin on my left click, then every three seconds it's going to be uh, canceling any Divergent Withering Step I could have. Or any Withering Step I could have, unless the Divergent part of it goes off. But it also could help me just get out of a situation, because it temporarily gives me phasing too, so... I don't know, it might be worth it, it's hard to say. I could also just give myself it in general. Just have that be something that is on my left click. That's totally fine. But that also means that my dash is going to be on cooldown often. And I'm also going to be, like, wasting it constantly. Because I'm just, like, there's, there's going to be a lot of skill usage to, like, spawn all my totems and stuff, too. Hmm. I definitely don't want it on my left click. But it, it might help me if it's on, if it's just on my cast when stunned. Certainly better than nothing. Let's put it that way. So I would need a green, blue, red, red. So the best way to do that would be reduce the two sockets. I'm going to make both of those red. Okay, blue socket. No, I need a green socket. There we go. Oh, wait. Or link. Cool. Oh, shit. I can't, I can't do it that way. I have to... I can't have a four link. I need a two link. There we go. Because otherwise, the, the cast when stunned is going to support the steel skin, and I do not want that. For right now, inspiration goes down there, and increased duration goes up here. That will give my steel skin a duration of 2.5 seconds, with a 3 second cooldown. That's not bad. I think the duration also goes up as the level goes up too, so there is that too. Plus, I'll get more cooldown recovery when I get quality on it, so. I haven't actually had a chance to really look at this weapon effect. So this, uh, this purplish weapon effect that's on my bow right now, that is my reward for shifting stones. That's, uh, what I earned was the purple weapon effect. What's it called? Uh, chaotic Aethercraft Weapon Effect. It's cool. Kind of sad that I didn't get more, but, I mean... Eh. I got... From the, uh, Krangled League, I got the Project Weapon... Uh, the, the Project Weapon skin. As well as, I also got the... Where is it? The entire Immortal Body set. Or entire, uh, Immortal Armor set. No, Immortal Body Armor set as well, so I already got a fair bit, <laughs> which is why I should not complain, but yeah. Also, yeah, if anyone played the Krangled or, um, not Krangled, if anyone played the Shifting Stones League, that stuff is now, that has now been given out, the, uh, the microtransactions, or it will be given out soon, because I believe they put the send them out in waves, so you won't necessarily see all the stuff at the same time that I see stuff. But, you know. Hmm. Oh, that goes really well with the armor. That's cool. I prefer to have, like, a red skull head, but I don't have anything... I have the ultimatum helmet, which I guess is red. 
I guess oh I I guess I could go all red. Yeah. Ultimatum helmet, ultimatum weapon effect, or ritual weapon effect, and ultimatum pet. And rapture wings, which I assume are from ultimatum or ritual. That actually looks really cool. Oh, but that is the build. That is the Blast Rain build. It's going to become a lot better over time, but I'm probably going to be playing around with it on Thursday as well. Though, by the time I, we get there, it should be a little bit better set up. Because, I mean, all I have right now is just level 15-ish gems. Yeah. 15, 16, 15, level 8, level 13, level 16. Yeah, like if I actually had like decent gems, like if this was a 2020 anomalous uh, blast rain, I would be, it would be so much more powerful. <laughs> actually, let's, let's compare the difference. Uh... Almost blast rain. Okay, this is a 2020 right there. All right. Nope, not that. Copy. Let's see what the difference is. Well, besides, like, the the benefits of having cover Nash and stuff. It'd also be like a pr pretty significant damage increase too. Just flat. Okay, so. So we have 34%. Attack damage is 34% of base. Affection is 34%. The attack damage here is 35.6 and 36% of added damage effectiveness. This has 27% fire res fire pen. This is 30% fire pen plus the 5% chance to cover Nash. I wonder if this feels any more powerful. I'm gonna pick a random random tier sixteen. I don't really care about completing this one. This is just for the sake of testing the difference. And again, all my other gems still suck, but like this is this is a example. Okay, so it's specifically the blast ring that is on my totems. Oh, okay. So all of those projectiles are just shredding the totems to the point that they can't actually even attack. Okay, so that's a problem. Hmm. How do... Okay, I can fight myself, and I don't have to worry as much, because I don't die instantly. Well, okay. Theoretically, I don't. <laughs> maybe I picked a bad... Maybe this is like a bad mob set to deal with for this. Okay, living. Yeah, well, give me something that's not whatever the hell that was. Oh, no, don't give me more. Oh, God. Oh, God, there's so many. Oh, God, there's so much happening. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah. I'm not strong enough for this yet. Help. Help. 
<laughs> no. Is there a god touch mob in here too? Is that what I just saw? Oh my gosh, the totems last, like, seconds. Not even seconds before they just get shredded by something. I really, 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 really need totems that are not ass. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I could really use a... I guess a uh, level 21... No, you need level 22 to get less, more or less damage. More or less damage is a weird oxymoron. Where? Okay. So... This is level... F That's required level 58, which makes me think that the totems have 3,000 health right now. Of their eventual 9,800. Maybe that maybe that's really just the problem there is that the uh, ballista totem support is just shit. I don't need level 21. I need level 20. Ideally, with some sort of Quality on it. There's a 2020 right there. Let's see if if that actually affects it, because that might be the problem there. And if it's that simple, then it would be good to just fix that so I can get a more accurate representation. Because it did say that it the life of the totem scales on on the ballista totem support or the totem itself if it is a totem natively, and it is not a totem natively. Okay, that's that's four more levels. Let's see how does how that does. Maybe I should have gone for level twenty one version. I don't know. Okay, gonna give me some more. Let's take some more of these. Okay, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like the totems have more health already. Yeah, no, look at look at them. They're not dying and it like immediately. I think that's actually like a big difference. Oh yeah, look at them. Holy shit, I didn't realize the the big difference that was. Okay, let's take this into some more like questionable areas and see what happens to them. Yeah, they're just recovering their health really fucking quick. No, oh no, oh no, oh no. Freeze! That, they're lasting quite well now. Okay, so maybe they aren't paper thin if you have a level totem support, which also means maybe that I need a... Okay, so I never would have considered this, but I probably need a level 21 Ballista Totem support way more than what it would suggest by Path of Building. It is also worth noting that Totems take 80% less damage than uh, a player does. So, they're 25... It's like, I they're... 1,500 health is a lot closer to 6,000 health if they're a player. Which is... Wait, no, does that make sense? No, that'd be 7,500 health then. 
that might actually be okay. And also, when I'm dealing a bit more damage, then they them lasting as long won't matter. Okay, let's dump them down against all these projectiles. Okay. There's... Oh my gosh, the leech on them is really good now. Okay, so they're not, like, surviving incredibly well, but they're surviving so much better than before to the point that it's just ir irreplaceable. Wow. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's much nicer. Okay, so I'm going to go kill the boss in this map. Just see how we're, how we're doing. I can't believe that changing out the Blast Rain gem itself did not have the same like cataclysmic effect that changing out the totem support did. That surprises me. That that is just like so powerful. Let's just pop down some totems here. Pop down some totems here to fight the mobs for us. Cause I don't wanna die. Oh no, oh no. I wish there wasn't a pack of blues on top of this boss. It's gonna kill me. No. Why are you here? Why are you here? You don't need to be here. Go home. Go home. We're go to your dinosaur home. This is not cool. Something died. Okay, that is the boss right there. Okay, all three of the bosses are still alive. It's just the other stuff that died. I think with the Mirage Archer support, I need to like make sure to to cast from different locations so that they continue to respawn the archers. Because you can't be near the other archers when you spawn a new one. Okay, let's kill this boss, since this one seems to be the weaker one. And okay, now we can focus on one of the others. I really want to kill a tier 16 with this build. Because that would be pretty fucking good considering that this build just became a... It just came to life, basically. Also, I'm surprised... I'm... Surviving a surprisingly long time right now. Ooh, yeah, no, let's target this one. Oh, look at that blast rain. Oh, that's... That's sexy. Oh, I'm easily maintaining my, my Frenzy charges. I totally haven't even looked for that yet. Okay. I take... Oh. Oh, that's unfortunate. It is taking damage, though. I'm taking them down. I killed the second boss. I This is my last life, and it's on half health. It's unfortunate that everything has 40% of its max life as energy shield. <laughs> there, there you are.
I need to make sure to keep attacking so that I can keep spawning Mirage Archers. That is how this build plays. I've never really played with the Mirage Archer Ascendancy stuff before. This is my first time, so... I mean, it's slowly dying. I, we finally got through the energy shield. Took a while. But we are finally through it. Fuck yeah! Okay, this build has beat a tier 16 map while almost none of its gems are leveled. Holy shit, that's really, really good. But I was able to maintain all three Mirage Archers while just walking in a small circle, so that does bode well for actually being able to count on their damage. And I was surprisingly able to maintain myself without dying. So there's also that. I'm liking this. This is this seems pretty good. It's one other thing I want to check. Uh not this. So just looking at the path of building, this is gonna be the last thing we do for the stream today. Uh so the health right now at this, using the stronger passive tree that doesn't have extra totem health, I have 1478 for totem life. So 1500 totem life. I'm going to add one level to the ballista totem support. That's now 2120. That brings up to 1650. This adds an extra 150 life. And considering that this only takes 20% of the damage that uh, a player would, that's a lot closer to 750 more life if you were a player. That's actually really, really good. So that means you get... you. You get almost 10% more life on your totems just by picking a level 21 over a level 20. Maybe this is why people think that they're paper thin. Because, like, yes, they are paper thin. <laughs> that, that's, that is true to an extent. But the if they're just, let's say, leveling it and they're just in maps, they have, like, a, let's say, a level... 18 Ballista Totem support, and they're just, like, trying to push their maps, like, up to, like, up into red maps, and they're like, god, my totems just aren't lasting. It might be because of the fact that Ballista Totem support basically has hidden stats in it that you can't see by looking at the gem. Like, in-game. Actually, I don't know if you can see it anywhere in-game. Yeah, let me grab the level 16 one. Okay. Let's see, can we find Totem Life anywhere here? Totem Life, Totem Life, Totem Life, Totem Life. Is this, is this the right one? Because that has all the sports on it. Avoidances, recovery modifiers, resistances, life regen. Life leech, mana leech. 
Mana Leech, Energy Shield Leech, Life Gain on Hit, Projectile Speed. Yeah, there's nowhere in... As far as I can tell, there's nowhere... Oh, right here! Right here! Okay, you can actually see on your tooltip the Totem Life. So I have 1478 right now. Uh, let's swap out to the level 16 one. Holy shit, okay. Going from a level 16 support to a level 20 uh, bla or ballista support doubles the life of the totems. That's ridiculous, because 772 up to 1478. That's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Which 1478, that should be about what we predicted. 1478, yeah, that's exactly what we predicted. Okay, so if I get a level 21 support, that would make it a lot better. That might actually be enough to... Uh, at, with my current DPS level, or like a little bit more, that would be enough to maintain myself. If I can get plus one to gem socket of gems on the chest plate somehow or plus to bow gems or something, and I have a level 21 of this, a, like anything I can do to increase my Ballista Totem support level would be really, really good. It also would give me, uh, would it also decrease the less damage modifier on it, too. Man, I cannot believe the difference between a level 16 gem and a level 20 gem. Like, usually it's not that stark. Where's my blast rain gems? Okay. Yeah, because if you just look at the blast rain gems, it's 34% attack damage of base goes up to 35.6% attack damage of base, and that's jumping five levels up. Like, that's not as big a difference. But as soon as... But with this, it's... With this build, it might actually be priority to buy a Ballista Totem support that is a higher, as high level as possible before you even buy an Anomalous Blast Rain or even like a level 20 Blast Rain. That's really interesting. I've never encountered that before with Totems. Probably because Ballista Totems are special. Because like they have a lot less health than normal Totems. It makes me wonder, how much health did the uh, Flame Surge Totems have? Let's see, what do we have? Totems. Oh yeah, the Totems had 2300 life, 2200 armor, uh, si plus 16% to all of the resistances. And had they had a twenty times duration modifier? No, they had a two and a half times duration modifier. Bring it to twenty seconds. Okay. Yeah, so that's why the flame surge totems never died was because they had like eight hundred more health than the. Uh, they had like another fifty percent of the help on top of the totems. Oh, that's based on a level 70 monster. Does that mean that... Hmm. Interesting. So that's probably, like, the that's probably the difference of... Oh! The totems get armor from determination. Uh, in the Flame Surge totem build. That's interesting. Did they. Can they evade? Is that possible? Where. Oh my gosh, where is the build that I was just looking at? Blaster and Ballista. There we are.
does not look like they can evade anyhow. So the fact that I'm an evasion build rather than an armor build actually has made the totems less tanky than they could be. Interesting. Let me swap in the uh, Torchokes in the in Path of Building, and let's just see what the difference is. Yeah, 1450 to 1850. That's a fair bit. Still, I don't think it's going to be enough reason to swap out such good boots. But it is... it's an idea. Oh, I also don't have the carcass jack that I was going to add to this build too, which is gonna which adds a bit of damage. That's only 187,000 actually. There's probably a better body armor than for this build considering the uh considering that that's only 187. That's not very high. Yeah, lore weaver would be better. Actually, I think there's a lot of things that are better. Look at the spell. That's 30% spell suppression, and it has cold damage natively, which means that I would have a higher chance of freezing, too. Plus, it has a really high evasion chance. Yeah, if I swap that out. Yeah, that brings up to 83% chance to evade, and it skyrockets the spell dodge chance. But a Hiri's Ire will cost a fair bit to get, so... There's also that. It does add more expense to the build. But, I digress. There's a lot of different things that could be changed around with this build to make it even better. But I think we'll end the stream here for today. It's been a good build crafting stream as we slowly work towards the next leak and our decisions for what builds we'll have. Uh, when this build is at a level that I would consider to be polished, I'm going to make a build video for this so that y'all have a uh, actual video if you want to build this for Affliction League that comes up on December 8th. I assume it would be 5 p.m. EST, Friday, December 8th. So, from the day of this stream, so it's a week this Friday, basically. Okay, thank you all for hanging out with me throughout the, all this build crafting. This is kind of the, the part of the game that I really, really love. And I usually do it off camera, but with a kind of a lack of gameplay to do, really, besides testing builds. It's kind of what I'm leading towards right now, because that's really what I'm going to be doing with Path of Exile, is I'm going to be testing lots of new builds just working on uh just working on like creating new good options for what I could run next league as like my main build or what I can run as my starter and then what I can run later on I also have some ideas for a uh flame link support build too so I'm going to uh I'm probably going to show off like the flame link support build and like the uh Iron Mass uh, Skeleton Summoner on Thursday as well, as well as like any work I've done on this build. And we'll just keep working on theory crafting until December 8th. So our ne the next three streams are probably all going to be theory crafting. Well, that and if this build becomes more of a thing, I might play a bunch of it just to, because it's fun. It's, it's cool to watch too, because it's all explosions all the time. 
thank you all for coming to the stream today. For everyone who's here and has been here, I really appreciate all of you. You mean the world to me, and you really make this experience of streaming what it is. It makes the game more fun for me, and I really love interacting with you all. So thank you. Thank you all for coming, and I hope you have a great night.